All right, this lesson is about transcription basics. Right, so transcription is the process by which nucleotide bases are copied and sent into the cytoplasm. Treat our DNA strand like a book in the library. It's got all the information that we need, but we're not allowed to borrow it because it's in the reference section. If someone takes it out, someone else can't use it. So the information that we have here is really important. It needs to be photocopied before it is sent out into the cytoplasm to be turned into a protein. Now, the process by which it's turned into a protein is called translation, but transcription plus translation make the situation where we go from gene into the protein, okay? Transcription is that very first step in the process, and we often call it gene expression. It's because we are taking all these base pairs and turning them into basically what we know to be a protein. But in the meantime, uh, it is just nucleotide pairs. Okay, so we'll worry about that next step once it's outside the cytoplasm later, but we have to look at the, the main parts of transcription. Transcription firstly starts off with the DNA strand opening up to the important part of uh, where the gene will be. So the particular uh, code or the particular order in which the, the base pairs are there, uh, that makes the important part or, hey, we need this, we need to uh, create more haemoglobin or something, and this is our uh, haemoglobin gene. What we are going to do is photocopy it. So the body brings in free nucleotides that are floating around inside the cell and it starts to join them together okay it facilitates free nucleotide uh, addition essentially they they start to add together and these will uh, coincide or, or complement the base pairs that are on that part of the strand and then eventually that piece of RNA which has been built gets sent out of the, out of the um, the nucleus so this here is considered M RNA or messenger RNA. We will also have tRNA or transport RNA, which we'll get to later on, but this is the important part here, the M, the mRNA. It is a single strand, and remember the difference between the RNA there is that it is single strand and it also does not have a thymine. It has a U for uracil instead. So no more thymine, just U. All right, this is a pretty complicated situation, so we can't look at it from that angle. We have to look at it in a bigger sense here. Now, really importantly to start with, we're going to have a huge enzyme that's working here, and it's called RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase obviously is working on RNA, and it is making a polymer. Okay, remember the polymer is lots of the same monomer linked together, and the A's part will indicate to you that it is indeed an enzyme. So lots going on there, and the RNA polymerase helps to open up the DNA strand, so unzip it essentially at the part it needs to get to, and it facilitates that free nucleotide grabbing. So a free nucleotide is obviously going to have all the same things that our other nucleotides attached to the DNA strand have. So it's got that sugar, it's got a phosphate, and it also has the base attached to it. That's one. So that might be um, a T for thymine, but in this case, we aren't going to build thymine. We are going to build something with something else on it. So we might say that this is a uracil, okay? So what the RNA polymerase does is it grabs those out of thin air and starts to build them up around the uh, strand of DNA that we are transcribing. So this is known as the DNA template strand because it is the template from which we are copying this one is called the coding strand. Now, it seems strange because we aren't actually doing anything with it, but you'll see in a minute that what we create as RNA becomes almost exactly what this coding strand is. This one is called a sense strand. Well, this one is called the anti-sense strand because, remember, they are complementary. All right, so once that RNA polymerase starts to grab little nucleotides out of seemingly thin air, it will start to build it so that it matches and complements all these here. So we will have this one. We will have a matching uh, T, A is the complement, C, C, G. We don't have a T, we have a U, so we're going to keep going like that. Um, I might make lots of mistakes. I apologise. I'm a bit slow as well, so the complement of A is U, A, C, G, U, U, U. 
A and C. The way I like to remember it is in mRNA or in any RNA, uh, there are only vowels. So the T disappears and we've got the A and the U together and then the consonants match together. So that big old green piece of mRNA will then travel out of the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm. We can see now if we look at it, this is our coding strand because our mRNA actually matches it. Apart from the U's, it is the sense strand. It's the one making sense. This one is the opposite because it is the complementary one. Even though this is the one that we are using as the template, this is how it comes out and it should match that. So RNA polymerase is unzipping the DNA. It is then facilitating that free nucleotide um, building and there's plenty of animations out there that will help you see that.